Okay, so now we're going to get on to the um, Fibonacci sequence, and this is something that a lot of people are familiar with, so um, that might make it easier for them to understand. So what do you know about the Fibonacci sequence? That it occurs everywhere in nature, that um, um, the man who came up with it first, and I forget his name, um, got the sequence out of scriptures, um, seemed to be repetitive patterns in scriptures, and then he realized that they're repetitive patterns in nature. Um, that's about all I sort of can think of on the fly. All right, so um, if you don't mind, I'd like to show you a, a quick video of um, a series that you can find on YouTube called uh, Spirit Science, uh, which is, I believe, quite, quite interesting because they are explaining things very well. I'd say. Um, the guy is, is speaking a bit fast, but yeah, it's just a few minutes, like just two or three minutes, and yeah, it's going to save me a lot of time. Basically, the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of number. I, I will give you give you my uh, point of view after, but let's let's watch first this. Uh, okay, go this, for it. And see uh, see what we think about it. Uh, okay, so I'm showing the screen. Um, okay, here we go. Can you see it? All right. Five, also known as the golden ratio or golden mean, is a very simple relationship. If you had a rod and were going to put a mark on it, only two places would mark the phi ratio, which is here or here. Uh, we've lost a sound there. E is equal to E. This ratio could then span on forever, going smaller and smaller, or bigger and bigger forever. This ratio is infinite. It has no beginning and no end. It is also believed that phi is the mathematical root of all other sequences. See, every mathematical sequence in existence needs a minimum of three numbers to figure out the sequence. Phi only needs two. It is the only one. Similar to how the circle and square are the source of all shape, but we'll get to that later on. The next thing that you need to know is that this ratio is found in all life everywhere, sort of. By sort of, I mean it truly really Fibonacci, but we'll look at that in a moment. Look at your hand. Not only does each finger have its own ratio moving up each finger, which is phi to the next bone, but it oscillates back and forth from the tallest finger to the thumb. You wonder why the human hand is like that? It's based on phi. This relationship is found throughout the body in various ways, moving up the arms and legs, in your face, throughout the entire body. This is a Greek statue that accurately represents this. The Greeks were very precise when they made their art because they understood phi, Fibonacci, and the importance of these sequences. When the Romans took over Greece, you can see the perfection in statues just completely disappear. I'm not saying the Romans were bad artists. They just didn't measure everything to the same caliber that the Greeks did. Here is the phi ratio in butterflies. You can see this ratio everywhere, from the wing size to the body to the antennas. They're all phi ratios. Here's dragonflies. It's the same story. Phi runs along the entire body and the relation to the body and the wings here it is in frogs. Phi is found throughout the body in relation to the head, to the arms, to the fingers, and so on. Well, what about fish? You'd think they wouldn't be found in fish. Well, here's three kinds of fish. Once again, the ratios are consistent. It doesn't just apply to these creatures, though. Regardless of what mammal, insect, avian, plant, or living creature of any kind, you will find this ratio one way or another. There's a reason for this, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let me show you the importance we used to place on this golden ratio. In ancient times, we built many structures based on phi because we understood divine proportion. This is the pagoda of Yakushiji Temple in Japan. It's built with these same mathematics from the doorway to the ball on top of the temple. It is a structural embodiment of the proportions that all life holds. The Parthenon in Greece also has the exact same mathematical structure, but even more. I recommend watching Nova's Secrets of the Parthenon if you wish to learn more about this, because the stuff that they find is really cool. The Great Pyramid in Giza also has these proportions. They're incredibly precise, perfect in every way. You'd think that by building these structures using the logical and mathematical proportions so carefully, they would hinder the creativity behind these buildings, but they really don't. In fact, the left brain understanding all of this can even enhance creativity if used correctly. It makes me wonder about all of the world famous buildings of the modern world. Could phi be a large factor in what makes them stand out? Let's move on to our next sequence, which is called Fibonacci. Now, the Fibonacci sequence is life's way of creating the golden mean. Allow me to explain. This sequence is continually made from adding the previous number to the current. 1 and 1 is 2. 2 and 1 is 3. 3 and 2 is 5. 
five and three is eight. You can see how it continues. Now, what most people don't know about Fibonacci is that it actually continually strives closer and closer to the phi ratio. By dividing the current number into the last, you can see what's happening. One into one is one. Well, that's not close at all. Two into one is two. This time it's over five, but closer. Three into two is 1.5, which is under, but closer still. Five into three is 1.666. This time it's over, but even closer. Continuing with that, it's 1.6, and then 1.625, 1.615384, 1.619048, and so on. It continually oscillates over and under the phi ratio, never quite making it there, but continuing on closer and closer every time, until eventually you can't even tell the difference. Because phi is an infinite number, this sequence will go on forever. Let's look at some spirals in nature, another way that phi and Fibonacci can manifest. This is a Nautilus shell. Many people will say it's phi, but it's really Fibonacci. See how when it's in its earliest form, it's crude, not smooth or anything? One well, look, and you can tell that's not phi. But as it goes up farther and farther, it gets closer and closer to phi. It becomes a nearly perfect phi spiral by the time it's all the way out here. This also happens with sunflowers, pine cones, and many plants in nature. In many cases, such as the pine cones and sunflowers, it forms in a double spiral or more, much like the spiral arms of the galaxy. From the microcosm to the macrocosm, spirals are always present. So phi is basically source, or spirit, or God, in a mathematical way of thinking. <laughs> the math of God. Don't forget, this sequence is an intimate part of nature itself. I'm going to call it source. It is the source of all mathematical sequences, and all life in existence grows based on phi. However, phi has no beginning and no end. Life doesn't know how to deal with that. It's like source says, go and replicate this, and life says, we don't know how. Because life doesn't know how to create from something that has no beginning. So it creates the Fibonacci sequence instead, which has a beginning, but starts out crude, very basic, and then continually goes closer and closer to source, becoming more divine every step. It does take steps too, which actually has quite a bit to do with evolution. Let's move on for now though. The only other sequence you need to know for this is binary sequences. This is a sequence like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, which is doubling the last number instead of adding it to the previous one. We're all very familiar with this. Binary sequences are found in life as well. For example, mitotic cell divisions are binary. We go from being a single cell being to having over 100 trillion cells in only 46 divisions. Binary sequences are also how computers work, by turning on and off chips. Computing at its core, anyways, is binary. Okay, let's move on to something different for now, but what we just looked at will reveal itself in time. This is how a polar graph usually looks, with 36 radial lines in 10 degree increments, representing the 360 degrees. Then, concentric circles are drawn, each with the same distance away as the last, creating eight equal demarcations as the one before, counting the inside circle as one. Think about what this represents, too. It's a two-dimensional drawing of a three-dimensional sphere, one of the sacred forms, by projecting it onto a flat surface. This is also called the shadow form, and casting shadows is a sacred way to obtain information. Also, a polar graph has both straight, male lines, and circular, female lines, both male and female energies interacting at once. Right. Uh, it's it's quite interesting. This this episode is very interesting and and show uh, easily how um, the two the two energy are working together and how the Fibonacci sequence is actually everywhere in nature and represent this kind of male and female energy like the curvature and the straight line. Yes. Yep. As we were seeing before in your diagrams. Yes. So um, I'd like now to show you another uh, another video that now will show you the number nine, the number Fibonacci as uh, another sequence. So just just to show you quickly um, uh, what what's what's exactly made the Fibonacci sequence. Um, yeah, here. You, so can you see the, the picture now? Yes, I can. All right, so on this picture, as you can see, um, this is the perfect representation of Fibonacci. So Fibonacci starts with a sequence of number based on 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, uh, 8, uh, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144, as you can see here. So why this sequence is based on 1, 1, uh, one, one, two, three, five, eight, and so on. Because from my understanding, um, everything, um, so the, the, the Fibonacci sequence philosophically mean the past plus the present equal the future. 
So it's a symbol of evolution, actually. So how do we translate that mathematically? So the past was the vacuum, was before the existence of the reality, which is actually mathematically the zero. So the past was the vacuum, the reality is the one, and the future is equal to the past plus the present. Okay, so past is zero, plus one, which is the present, equal the future, which is one. So that's why the first sequence is actually based on one, one. Okay, then you, the one become the present, the first one become the past, so you have one plus one equal two. And then one plus two equal three. And then two plus three equal five. Five plus three equal eight. Eight plus five equal uh, 13, and so on. But what is very important on this symbol, as you can see it, is that there's, phi is also representing more, more things. As you can see, there's a few points. You have a point here, point there, 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 here, 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 and here, okay, and so on. And what is very interesting on this picture is that, as you can see, you have two ways of moving into life. You have the straight line way, which is doing following this shape. Can you see my mouth? Yeah. Yep, I can. Okay. So the straight line way, which is following this movement. Okay, remember straight line, one, four, seven. And the curvature way, which is this one, following this, this, and this, and so on. So again, the male and the female, yeah. Male and female energy are exactly represented into this shape. And show us that regardless to the way you are moving into life, the importance is not if you choose to use, to use your right brain or your left brain. What is important is where did you go? Did you, you, did you go through those points? Or did you miss out your, your way in your life? Okay, so that's why for me it was very important to understand. And when I understood that, I was like, wow, that's very powerful to see how the same, the same symbol is actually representing the male energy straight line or the female energy. Okay, so now let's see where the Fibonacci sequence happen. So the Fibonacci sequence happen on, happen on, a year, uh, on, on the human body. In the proportion of the fingers, so two, three, five, eight. Two, three, five, eight. So we can see that there's a proportion on the uh, fingers, in the pine, in the pineapple, fingerprints. So here we have, um, maybe, maybe it's a brain. I don't know exactly if it's a brain. But maybe it's the lungs. Maybe it's some lungs or kidney. I don't know, but we can see that this shape. Yeah, bronchi or something like that down the bottom there. Yep. Yeah, and you have the tree here, which is very interesting. I love this picture because it can show us how everything is actually connected. So where do we find pi? In the macrocosm? Okay, on the tornado. Into the universe, into the plant. On the shape of an egg. Interesting. Here you can see the Fibonacci ratio. As you can see, we just follow the sequence. Cabbage, yep. Cabbage. The shape of Africa. Which we're respecting the... It would be interesting to see what, what do we have here exactly. It would be really interesting to see because the shape is actually very, very interesting. Like the shape of Africa is very interesting if you look closely. So you know this one. Yep. DNA. The wave. The body of uh, fetus. Music. Remember the shape of the music, the symbol of music is actually showing a, a vortex, a water vortex. Yep, the clefts, yep. I love this one too because really, really show how 
the Fibonacci sequence and the body of, uh, of a fetus is, is really, really identical and the shape of some galaxies. Crop cycle. You can see an eye and see how everything is actually identical to what's happening in the, in the universe. and see how the body is actually generating uh, a magnetic field too. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to show you now is how, what is the re real identity of Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence. So now we're going to reduce the base uh, number of Fibonacci sequence. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. 3 plus 1 equals 4. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 3 and 4 equals 7. 5 and 5 equals 10, which is 1. 8 and 9 give 8. And 144 give 9. Still following? Yep. Here you go. So yeah, if we continue the sequence after, we find exactly uh, a continuum. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's clear, but yeah, uh, one, so the past plus the present equal the future. So one, uh, zero plus one equal one, one plus one, two, two plus one, three, uh, three plus two, five, five and three, eight, eight and five, 13, okay, and so on. 89 and 144 equal 233, you see. 233 and 144 equal 377. Okay, 377 plus 233 gives 610. So we continue the Fibonacci sequence and we're actually going to reduce those numbers. So as you can see here, one, one, two, three, five, eight, three plus one, four, two plus one, three, three and four, seven, five and five, one, eight and nine, eight. And then we're going to follow it. So three and three, uh, six and two, eight, so eight. 7 and 7, 14 and 3, uh, 14 and 3, 17, 7 and 1, 8, okay, 6 and 1, 7, and so on. So we're going to, to reduce all the, the, the Fibonacci sequence and see what's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to show you on my uh, Excel spreadsheet, so you can, it's going to be easier for you to, uh, to understand it. So, yeah. All right, so here, so on, in white, you have the sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144. Then you have the second sequence, then you have the third, and it's going on, going, going on. So what we are doing is we are reducing on the reduction line, which is under, so here, one, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven, one, eight, and nine. 144 is four and four and one nine. Then we continue here and we see eight, eight, seven, six, four, one, five, six, two, eight, one, 
nine. Okay, and, and if we addition the first reduction with the second reduction, we find nine everywhere. All right, so one plus eight equal nine. 1 plus 8 equals 9, 2 plus 7 equals 9, 3 and 6 equals 9, 5 and 4 equals 9, 8 and 1 equals 9, 4 and 5 equals 9, 3 and 6 equals 9, 7 and 2 equals 9, 1 and 8 equals 9, 8 and 1, and 9 and 9, 18, which is 1 and 8, 9. So Fibonacci is not actually a sequence that goes to the infinite. It's actually a sequence of two sequence of 12 numbers each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And every 12th number, the number 9 happened. Yep. Happened yeah. here, it happened here, it happened here, it happened here directly. But the number 9 is also happening in all the opposite of the sequence. And if we continue, we have exactly the same sequence that happened again. Seven, uh, 75,025, which is actually equal to 28,657 plus 46,368, is actually give 1 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 5 and 8 and, and 4. And actually, the, the same, exactly the same sequence which is here happened here again. And exactly the same sequence here happened here again. And this can go to the infinite. Okay, and they're always, they are always equal to nine. Yeah, it's like the fractal decompression that you're getting there. Yes, again. So, this is what I did on this design. So now you're a little bit familiar with this kind of shape. Yep. So I start with nine, and then I did one, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven, one, eight, nine. Okay. One, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven, one, eight, nine. Okay, and then eight, eight, seven, six, four, one, eight, eight, seven, six, four, one, five, six, two, eight, one, nine, five, six, two, eight, one, nine. And after that, we go back to the one. So we go back here. And again, if we associate the one, four, and seven, one, four, and seven, two, five, eight, three, six, nine, we also have the same vortex. So in that case, three, six, and nine works together. One, four, seven, one, four, seven, two, five, eight works together. And we have exactly the same shape that, that starts to happen. And we can see that one plus eight 8 and 1 equal 9, 1 and 8 equal 9, 1 and 8 equal 9, 2 and 7 equal 9, 6 and 3 equal 9, 5 and 4 equal 9, 1 and 8 equal 9, 4 and 5 equal 9, 6 and 3, 7 and 2, 8 and 1, 8 and 1, 9. So again, it's completely perfect. Yep, there's balance and there's order. Exactly. Okay, it's another representation. So the energy is flowing from one to eight. From one to eight. From three to six. Right? And you have the double triangle three, six, nine, three, six, nine. So I just wanted to see what's happening if we connect the numbers together. So one and one, two, one and eight, nine, two and two, four, three and six, nine, five and five, one, eight and one, nine, four and four, uh, eight, three and six, nine. So you have two, nine, four, nine, one, nine, 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 eight, nine, five, nine, seven, nine. Okay, one, four, two. Eight five seven, and if we addition all the numbers together, seven five eight one four two, we again have nine. Yeah, and the sequence has become immediately recognizable now. We've been doing this for a bit. Uh, you recognize it straight away. Mm -mm. 
and you see how how this is completely perfect. Okay, mm, maybe you are familiar with this symbol too. This is the um, fruit of life. Yep. Okay, it's another symbol, another way to see the yin and yang. Yep. Okay, so it seems that this sequence of numbers is actually absolutely not chaotic. It seems that this sequence is actually perfectly ordered if you know how to read it. If you see how every number is actually complementary. Yes. yes. Yeah, there's absolute order. Einstein would love you. He always said God doesn't play dice. Everything is in order. <laughs> there's no chaos. So now let, let's have a look to the ancient symbol. The Satsika, or I don't know, it was Sat Satsiva or Satsika, I don't remember. <laughs> Swastika, yeah. Swastika, you can have two different ways to make it. So you have this male energy, straight line, or the female energy, vortex. Yeah, I think in ancient Hindu symbology, the uh, and uh, going back further, I think Chinese... Um, uh, I, I know for sure that the Hindus interpreted the swastika as the, uh, the turning of the chakras. Yep. It's, got, it's very interesting to see the Jewish star and the Nazi symbol into the same shape. I believe that Hitler knew about, about what's going on, about this energy and what this vortex energy is working because the Nazi worked on anti-gravity and they worked on, on the way to control energy and generate free energy. And uh, as we can see here, there's a kind of movement of energy that is following specific patterns and coming back and, and going back. And, and you see that this energy is flowing through this symbol. There's something also very interesting and show how we are all connected and when we use the, the resonance energy, we can see how energy is actually flowing and, and coming from one point to another point. Where else do we have the vortex in water? The magnetic field of the earth. Shape of the cosmos. Tornado, twister, and the waves. So it seems that this vortex movement is actually everywhere in nature. Including in time too. You know, times yes. we consider time linear like we consider our maths linear. And that's also a wrong descriptor because time is also spiral. Time is also fractal. Yes. And now I'd like to show you where else do we find the um, golden number. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, yeah, seems that the vortex is not just in this planet, but actually above this planet too. Yep, and there's that movement again too. It's all in movement. It's all a movement. It's all a movement, and you, you see what they said in the beginning. The way we see the the planet turning around the sun, we just see them turning like this, but we just forget that the sun is moving, so we don't mm -hmm. see the vortex. I can't yes, remember what yeah. speed it is, but it's something like half a million miles per, per hour or something silly like that. It's, it's 70,000 kilometers per hour, yes. Something like that. Yeah, a huge number. So, yeah, you might think you're sitting still, but there's no such thing as sitting still. We're, uh, we're moving at breakneck speed and there's no one at the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, do you have any question about the... The Fibonacci sequence, or is it making sense now? Do you yeah, that it? is making sense to me, and it's like a refresher of things that I've that I've seen a long time ago. Um, but you sort of see it and make sense, and then you sort of put it aside. But uh, now you've brought it back. Yes, it does make sense. Absolutely, it's in everything, and everything is in that. Again, you recognise it. There's something natural about it, and we All don't right. we don't see that in our buildings. Oddly enough, or we only see the the male, the straight lines, and, um, you know, I think there should be more architecture based on these concepts so that uh, the buildings that we live in will, um, will vibrate with, um, with the sequence of the universe. Be yep. much healthier places to live in. Mm. So something I'd like to show you now is uh, what's happening in the angle. angle. Why, why angle? Because the angle is also a proportion. So basically, what's the definition of, uh, of an harmonic? A harmonic is when a sound is actually vibrating, uh, we'd say, with a bigger amplitude and a different geometry, I would say, because, you know, the natural symbol of, of sound of vibration is actually a two-dimensional wave, where actually, if it was in three dimension, we'd see the vortex again. It's yeah. a three-dimensional yeah. movement. We just visualize it in 2D, but why, for example, the, the shape of a speaker is actually round. It's because when he vibrates, he needs to push the vortex. The sound has to move like a vortex. Yes. So that's why we represent the two-dimensional uh, symbol in, in two-dimension, which is this sequence, but actually it's a three-dimensional. It's also a vortex. So sound is also a vortex. Correct. Um, light. I believe is also a vortex, is moving like a vortex. Okay, um, now what I'd like to show you is um, this, uh, this proportion in angles, and uh, gonna tell me what you think about it. Thank you. 
Can you hear me? Yep, certainly can. So that, that's very interesting to see how um, on the circle, every point that, that is opposite to the other is actually equal to nine. That's why when you divide any angle, any degree of a circle, the angle is always equal to nine because the proportion of an angle has always to be equal to nine. Yes. And that's why we have 360 degrees in a circle. Of 3 plus 6 equals 9. And that's also why we have um, uh, 365.5 days in a year. We have exactly 364.5 days in a year. Because every four years, we have 365 days. Remember, 364.5 it's actually 3 plus 6 equal 9, and 4 plus 5 equal 9 again. So it's not just by chance. All that is actually quite well organized, and everything has to be equal to 9. As you can see on this circle, every point has to be equal to, has to be the exact inverse opposite of the other point. And both of them has to be equal to 9 when you addition them. Yeah. That's also why when you have... Um, what is it like a, a square into a triangle into into a round? Like here it is, ninety plus ninety plus ninety equals three hundred sixty. So you have exactly the same amount of angle into a square that you have into a round. Yep. That's interesting. That you have three hundred sixty degree in a square and three hundred sixty degrees around. Why? Because a square all around are actually two expressions of the same reality. One is the male energy and the other one is the female energy. But the proportions are always equal to the same, 90, 90, 90, 90. And you can have four, uh, four, four times 90 degrees if you divide your circle by four. 90, 90, 90, 90. Interesting, huh? Yes, absolutely. Recurrent again. Okay, so the circle and the square have exactly the same proportion. All right. So what I wanted to show you now is um, this one. So, um, I don't know if you know that, but uh, do you know where we found, uh, for the first time, the flower of life? Um, uh, it was some ancient monument where they first found it. Um, can't okay, it's can't quite remember Egypt. where. Yeah, it's a temple in Egypt. And actually, what they discovered, that this flower of life was actually laser burn into a stone which has been dated to be more than 20,000 years old. And that's why actually the Egyptologue uh, spent time to understand what's going on because laser burn into the atomic structure of the granite, it's something we can't even do today. So that's why they really pay attention to it and the symbol. And, and now I'd like to show you one of the explanation of what is uh, the flow of life. So it's a three-dimensional representation of the flow of life. So as you can see, you have the one, two, four, eight, seven, five, three on the top, 
and six underneath. So we can see a perfect balance. Nine is everywhere. So I believe this symbol is actually the three D representation of the two triangle I showed you before. Yep. So you have a first triangle, a first tetrahedron based on the male energy, one, four, seven, and six, okay, which is equal to 18, which is nine. And then you have the female, two, five, eight, plus three, which is equal to nine. Yep. Okay, two plus five plus eight. So eight and five, uh, 13, uh, 14, 14 and 2, uh, 16, no, sorry, 8, uh, uh, 13, sorry, 8 and 5, 13, 13 and 2, 15, 5 and 1, 6, 6 and 3, 9. Yep. And this is what we also know as the Merkaba, double triangle is composing the human body and, and more things. That male equivalent of the, the flower of life or the Taurus, yep. Yeah. Have you ever seen this uh, video before? Well, not outside myself, but I do see it within myself sometimes in meditation or in moments, you know. Oh, you mean the, the Merkaba, you mean the Merkaba, you feel it in yourself? Yeah, well, well, both, both the shapes, because one's the male and the other's the female, yes. Yeah. Right, and one more video I wanted to show you is this one, which is actually representing how our universe is currently working. So it's an expansion until arriving to the point of uh, extension, the maximum extension before going back to the compression. So this is the, the time of, and this is the limit, and then we go back. Yep, fractal, fractal expansion and, and compression. quite fascinating when you see it, how everything is actually duplic duplicating and, and uh, yeah, uh, until being the biggest expansion until go back to the first initial element. Again, perfect order. Perfect order, yes. So, yeah, we can, I think, stop now and, and see the third part, which is going to speak about music and 
and uh, cosmology uh, organization of the universe. What do you think about it? Yep, I think we'll leave this one here for now. And music is definitely going to be interesting because I think that um, uh, the music we're listening to in A440 tuning is really um, putting us in a disharmonious um it's disharmonious to the, the resonance of the field, to the resonance of um, the electromagnetics of the uh, universe. And uh, we really have to uh, go back to the old Pythagorean tuning in order for our, our emotions create, uh, our emotions a great creator of our reality. And we have to go back to um, getting our emotions to resonate because music is emotion in motion. <laughs> and... Um, and we have to go back and we have to resonate with the field again in order to repair ourselves and then enhance our world. Uh, we need those new descriptors and we need to generate the right emotion, which comes from the right music and the right tuning. And we need, obviously, the new languages of maths, vortex, maths, and, uh, and sacred geometry that we're bringing together. So this has been a really good uh, sequence and we'll stop it here. Thank you, Roman. Thank you.